Hey everyone, welcome to Journey to the West, our first episode of the new year. Uh, I'm Jay, and I'm joined here with Sen. Hi everyone, I'm Sen. And today we're just going to do a brief rundown of recent news that you may have missed in the last couple of weeks. Last week of December, first week of January. Basically, New Year, same bullshit. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to make a couple of announcements just in case anybody's missed them. We recently announced that V will be taking a break indefinitely from the pod because she's really busy with her grad school app. So uh, we wish her luck and we hope that she can come back and join us eventually. Another thing is that instead of releasing three pods per month, as we were doing before, we're going to cut it down to two. It's just a lot easier to schedule that way and also put more time into the topics that we do. So let's dive into the most recent fuckery. I'm going to start with some comedians who would shoot out for doing some racist shit. Beginning with... Louis C.K. Now, he's a white liberal comedian who has had his own specials. He's had his own show and everything. He tries to brand himself as like the woke bay of uh, comedy. And I guess he fucking isn't. Uh, earlier, either this year or last year, I mean, not this year, but uh, 2018 or 2017. Some accusations serviced of him doing some strange and creepy, rapey things to women. Uh, for instance, masturbating in front of them, which is weird and gross, uh, without consent. So after all of that, he comes back and rebrands himself as the edgy person. So one of his most recent sets was an entire thing that was just shitting on Asians. He's, he said that Asian men have small dicks because they're really women. And that when Asian men and women have sex with each other, they're just rubbing their clits together because Asian men just have clits instead of dicks, which is pretty terrible. And even if it is satire or irony, ironic racism is still racism because you just, you put it out into the world. Because not everybody, even if your intention was to make fun of people who are racist, it doesn't come across that way. And you're just putting more racist shit into the world. And I honestly have no faith in white people just joking about racism. So that was some shit. And uh, depressingly, as usual, everybody's coming out to defend the guy. So like people like Judd Apatow are like, we need to have sympathy for him because he's been through a lot. You know, we have to understand where he's coming from. Well, no, no. We are constantly being forced to see everything from the white perspective, even when it harms us. So fuck you, no. <laughs> and then there are also the uh, freedom of speech advocates that are coming out in mass and being like, oh, well, he has the right to do this joke because this is a marker. And that's fucking bullshit because, okay, if you're free to be racist, then we are free to call it out too. So why, why are you only coming out to defend this guy and not our right to defend ourselves? Uh, I don't know if Sen wanted to add anything. I know earlier we were discussing this and she was like, well, actions have consequences. I did say that actions have consequences and well, there was this one dude I saw, he was saying that, oh, he should have the right to say what he wants and keep his job. And I'm like, no, he's not entitled to his job. His whole job is to be funny and he's not funny. 
and it also really does call into question what he's previously said like how people applauded him for his apt commentary on like the current social climate and being fair-minded and woke as jay said but woke bay yeah (laughs) the problem with uh say this sort of satire is it doesn't matter if you your intent your authorial intent was to have this like oh i was just trying to be sarcastic here and i'm just just trying to be exaggerating my humor and that doesn't matter because your quote can just be pulled by just about anyone and twisted to fit their agenda you know and and these sort of these sorts of jokes don't really bode well in the long run because people just internalize these racist jokes as like a fact and then they reproduce them yeah into fucking memes and again memes lose the context or the intention they wanted like the authorial in- uh intent as people call it so uh-huh. like yeah there's it doesn't matter what media it is there's a, a lot of people that are debating that type of thing now authorial intent versus um death of the author and in this case it really is death of the author it doesn't matter what his intent was it doesn't matter if like a couple of years from now a couple of months from now he retroactively says oh like this is what i really meant like it doesn't matter and uh adding to that too there's a lot of people who are tone policing the backlash basically saying not not all white people and that sort of thing and it's just like why are you only there to tell us to be soft on the people who are harming us you're not here to tell the people who are harming us to not do that you know it's just and it's really frustrating to see a lot of asians do this because it's on social media in groups and stuff there are people asian people who would rather cape for white people than for us which is just like par for the course unfortunately for the diaspora in general because there's this there's such a lack of awareness about what symbolic violence is because that's what this is that's what anti-asian jokes are right they're there to harm us in order to enforce a social norm so that people know how oh, those asians they're really just all women uh, yeah, so the, there are toxic societal effects that it's not just a joke. It never is just a joke. Uh, moving on to the next comedian, because somebody uh, on Twitter who recently called out Chappelle bundled it into a bunch of other people who were being racist and something that I wasn't aware of. Dave Chappelle was one of them, uh, I guess, in one of his routines in a recent Netflix special saying shit about Asians, implying that Asians were inherently racist. Like something about how everyone in America is racist, but everyone in China is Chinese. She's just feeding into the xenophobia. Also some shit about sweatshops in China. Basically saying the same shit that white racists say about Asians, upholding that kind of uh, xenophobic, anti-Asian rhetoric that is just prevalent in the West. So I don't feel that he's really any better because he's just playing into the same harmful stereotypes and the same symbolic violence. Unfortunately, I mean, I used to be a fan of this guy. I used to watch his show all the time when I was younger because he had really insightful and biting commentary about racism, and he seemed to know what was up. Um, But he's also married to an Asian woman, specifically a Filipino woman. And for him to say this stuff kind of indicates to me that it's not really being policed at home 
like either there's there's no there's no one telling him what is and is not okay to say which is a problem like if you are going to make the choice to be with somebody who is not asian you have to make sure that they're not spreading racist shit bare minimum and it doesn't seem like she's doing that uh in a similar vein uh, unfortunately one of the actresses from kim's convenience a show that i have enjoyed before and i'm slowly being turned off uh said it it was okay for him to say that because his wife is asian which we all know is some bullshit <laughs> as though that's an excuse because no no it's not uh you can be incredibly racist and still be married to somebody who is not you know your race you can have sex with somebody and still be racist toward that race so no like all of history says no to that and it's just really frustrating when Asians who are really prominent in public and popular and in these positions of influence instead of using their influence to do good for us as a people are making excuses for the symbolic violence committed against us it's incredibly frustrating and it reminds me of well somebody else from Kim's convenience who like I got into a Twitter beef with last year. Mm. <laughs> uh, what was your name for him, son? The whole context of this fight was also in regards to him being in a play about the Vietnam War and about how, like, it had a very pro-American message and then people were going back and forth. And then he was, like, claiming his, like, oh, I acted in this role of – this Vietnamese character and and claiming his voice above other people who are actually Vietnamese, you know. So I called him uh, Sung Mo, which which means fog in Viet. He so badly wants to be Viet. I'll give him a name. So I also appreciate the pun because he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. It was just so stupid. In Viet diaspora, we all have like contentions over the way we view politics in terms of like being pro um being anti-communist and then by extension being very pro-america in a sense so it's a it's a complicated thing and we're all still working through it but the fact that he tried to disavow other opinions basically saying that the play is somewhat problematic uh, um the play was called Viet Gone by the way but yeah he it was it was just speaking over people and I hate it when people think that they again we are united as Asian diaspora but we're not a monolith and each of us have our own things specifically um, in our cultures and in our ethnicity that we deal with so I don't know it was just yeah. really stupid of him to do that. I don't even know if he deleted that whole thread. I mean, I think I tweeted about it quite a while ago. I think it might still be up there. I don't know. He doesn't seem like the type to delete his shit. Yeah, because he doesn't <laughs> give a shit. That's what it is. Yes, I was like, if because he's just an actor in this play. If he doesn't understand the greater context. And like, what is actually the kind of discussions that are happening in the community about it, then he has no right to talk over the actual people who are directly affected by this. Like, he, they weren't even criticizing him. They were criticizing it wasn't the play. His acting. Yeah, no one said he was a shit actor. It was the tone in which the play tackled the Vietnam War, which yeah. painted America in a positive light. You know? It's not even like a positive light. It was more so like... Like they saved us. Yeah, the white savior narrative. And like this is the type of thing that we're trying to move away. Uh, it's really disappointing because I, I saw like news on this play like quite a number of months ago when nobody was talking about it. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then 
again, it, it also goes into this whole thing about in acting. Like, there's no, I don't take issue with, like, Asians of other ethnicities taking roles so much, but there does come a point where this type of sensitive material needs to be tackled by someone that knows Mm -hmm. or is part of that community because he inserted himself as this like central as central to this narrative and by extension central to yeah you know the vietnamese american experience when he doesn't he doesn't understand shit is what i'm saying yeah i was just like don't get on the soapbox if you don't know what you're talking about like let the people who actually do know have that discussion at the very least Mm -hmm. and um this wasn't the first time but this kind of like confirmed that he was a douche because my my first interaction with him while harsh (laughs) was because i got really pissed because he uh, was talking about this statistic which showed that in a study Asian men had to make about like $240,000 more per year than white men in order to be considered equally to white women, to white men by Asian women, uh, which is fucked up. <laughs> Not sure if they specified Asian women in that study, but a clear example of systemic and structural racism, sexual racism against Asian men, something that directly affects him. And he went and dismissed it and was like, yeah, well, it's not really that bad. So I'm not going to whine about it. Like, okay. So that's what you think. He repositioned himself, like the whole thing and said, well, people are just whining. What you need to do is like do self-improvement. And the the problem with that is self-improvement only works for white people because like the elements of white people is themselves, whereas like people of different races or, you know, different minorities are dealing yeah. with structural like um, discrimination. And it, it also, it positions race as something to be overcome. Like it's a, like it's a hurdle that you, if you jump this high, then, then it'll be fine. But like the problem with racism and especially structural racism is that they'll, they'll give you these goalposts to, to meet, And then once you make it there, they'll move them farther back. So you have to do even more. So like you're, you're, you're always running up this hill, but you never really get over it. You might feel like you are, but at the end of the day, you're not. So it's like, I I just hate when the advice from somebody again, who has such a large platform is, well, you can be like me, you can be successful like me, and it's not so bad. Like, even though on the whole, you are still considered a second class citizen, you are not seen as fully human, but you can live with this, this life. It's okay, it's not that bad. Oh, yeah, by the way, watch all my movies, support me, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> this is empowerment, guys. Yeah. Like, empower me like, to like, make like money. It could be, it's like, you uh, know, when Celeste was, was all like, yeah, I care so much about uh, misogyny, especially against Asian women. By the way, the best way that you can fight this is to buy my books. <laughs> buy my books. Watch my movies. <laughs> No, this mm-hmm. this literally happened. This is not a joke. Like she in the middle of some debate thread, she plugged her book, and I'm like, "What the fuck? You already plug your book in your profile. If people want to check you out, there it is. You don't need to shamelessly shill for your bullshit. <laughs> what the fuck? Buy my books and the books of other women, but like, don't drop their names. Just my own. I know. <laughs> like, that's okay. so stupid. Like, how shameless can you get? Like, holy shit. And then meanwhile, she was like, hey, look at my shirtless selfie. Do you want to cast me in this role? Eh? Eh? Yeah, but like... Breaking stereotypes. It feels like, yeah, the their mm-hmm. so-called fighting it's... racism in, is clamoring for top billing in these films that they'll probably only release every fucking decade or some shit by the trend anyway. And it's just like, it's just becoming even more clear to me that if you are a notable, successful, famous Asian American or Canadian in this case, 
you're there because you're not a threat to white hegemony or white supremacy. You're there because you'll play the game. You're content to be beneath white people <laughs> specifically. <laughs> and you're not gonna challenge anything in, in a way that would jeopardize your career. So that's why you still have one. Again, if they wanna be underneath uh, white people, that's whatever it is, that's your choice, I guess. But the problem is they always make it out like, oh, what I'm doing is activism. What I'm doing, this representation is fighting racism. What I'm doing, this show, if you support it. I'm, I'm doing so much for you. You can't criticize me when I fuck up. Yeah, also. And, like they want to fucking like take this niche of like, oh, look, look at me. I'm an inspiration for this Asian generation. But then when it comes to some real shit, they're fucking quiet. They don't, they don't, they don't say anything. Mm. Uh, yeah. Which is why, you know, if you've noticed, we've kind of, we've tried to move away from the representation talk because it was a, it was a good introduction for us. But like, at least for me, the longer that I spent combing through everything that was being discussed, it was just stuck at this really basic level of, I want to see myself represented and then it stopped there and it didn't really dive into the nuances of like does this mean that the people who are representing me are like really sympathetic to white interests and are therefore ultimately doing something that's antithetical to what i want as a political uh entity you know like all of the buzz around um, last year's Crazy Rich Asians, people were calling it a win for representation, but like it's, okay, it's an enjoyable film, but it's not a win if, it, if all it does is elevate the careers of the people involved. Like there's no snowballing. It just happened that there were a bunch of Asian people making films at the same time. It didn't spark anything. Um, a lot of people are going to disagree with me about this, but like, see it for what it is. Entertainment in the context of a white supremacist society is not going to challenge it. They wouldn't let that shit fly. So there have to be other avenues that actually uh, confront and combat what's being done to us. Food for thought. Yeah, and it's not saying that, oh, you shouldn't watch these shows anymore because, like, I watch films or, like, media made by white people all the time. So it's, like, I don't mm -hmm. have a problem with, like, even watching some questionable, you know, actors, actresses, directors or whatever. But don't think that it it means anything deeper than that. I mean, they can they can go around, like, parading that this is a movement it isn't so there's that <laughs> and uh i guess that's enough on that topic we're gonna shift gears to stuff that's uh less entertainment i guess uh another thing that is from asian twitter that just blew up there was this white vegan who was basically talking shit about Asians being major perpetrators of animal abuse. And he uh, called hot pot dishwater, which is thinly veiled racism. Uh, whether it was intentional or not, again, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, we could also draw connections between dishwater and, like, the job of restaurant tour, which is one of the uh, professions that Asians were allowed to have when they first came to America. So whether he intended to or not, he was being racist. He tried to backtrack and was like, oh, I can't be racist. I have Asian friends, <sighs> which we've heard before, which is obviously bullshit. Um, in a crazy twist of fate, Jeff Yang actually called him out for it. Uh, 
didn't think he had the backbone to do that, but he did. <laughs> and it was it was a great thread that explained the history of the dish and how it was born from uh, it's like a cold weather climate food that was created to extend meat because there wasn't enough food. So like if you put everything into a soup, then you would have the flavor of the meat and it would sustain more people for a longer amount of time. Blah, blah, blah. It was basically a dish born from poverty. And then, yeah, it was just this really eloquent explanation of why it's there and why it's incredibly offensive to just dismiss it as dishwater because you're a vegan. <laughs> and the man's response, this white guy's response was, tradition is no excuse for animal abuse. Oh my God. The fuck you didn't, did you read? And if you didn't understand it, uh, <laughs> but she clearly didn't. Uh, it's like with this white guy, he's like, oh, I may have to humanize your peoples, but what about the animals the that animals. you abuse? It's like, what the fuck? Gurmagurd. I mean, as, as we've mentioned before, there are plenty of other uh, nations that eat a hell of a lot more meat per capita. Like, I think, uh, was it Switzerland that eats more dog meat per capita than even China? And, like, I think that's not even... Allegedly, I think they allegedly eat cats as well, but uh, mm. don't quote me on that. I don't want to yeah, you know, well, throw up. This shit. isn't... We didn't research that specifically before we started talking about this. But, yeah, there are plenty of other... Our, our talk about the traditions in other Western nations, making sausages and things, like fermented sharks. Um, yeah, there's definitely a Western country that does more whaling than Japan does, but then Japan keeps getting blamed for it. I think it was Iceland. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. And, and, like, that's not even touching... The uh, the terrible meat industry in Western nations, which is all mechanized and they feed everything antibiotics. And like, there's a reason that mad cow was an outbreak in Western nations because they were feeding the animals ground up pieces of other dead animals, which oh, is, is not boy. sanitary. Um, that shit didn't happen in, in Asia and other countries had to put a... Uh, a boycott on on importing meat from these nations. So, like, okay, before you go throwing stones, make sure you're not in a glass house. Basically, don't don't be that bitch. Um, Dishwater my ass. Anyway, that's the usual. Moving on. Oh, big news. So I guess to lead into this, recently there was an article in GQ that an Asian woman wrote about her experiences with East Meets East and how she felt awkward using a dating site that was for Asians. And uh, that reminded me of Subtle Asian Dating, which is an offshoot of Subtle, the Subtle Asians Facebook group. Oh, yeah, Subtle right. Asian Traits. Subtle Asian Traits, S-A-T. Uh, well, they recently got shut down. And I think this was in, like, the last few days, if I remember correctly. It's got to be, like, early January. Mm -hmm. Because uh, some white guys reported it. They got salty and uh, reported it for reverse racism. And uh, Facebook just took it down. Which is ironic because... The moderators of that forum were happy to allow non-Asians in there, and especially white dudes. Specifically white dudes, because we all know uh. why they're there. To mac on Asian women. But, like, that space was created specifically for Asians to meet other Asians. And uh, they didn't like that it was exclusive, because they felt entitled to fucking be there. So... This is what happens when you push back against that. They shut you down. I also heard that, I don't know if this is true, but 
They were also accused of soliciting prostitution, which is like, what the fuck? What? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, oh. I, I didn't research this properly, <laughs> but... I think, yeah, that sounds familiar, though. I... That sounds like something they would do, which, again, plays into more racist stereotypes. It doesn't... That doesn't make any sense. It's just so shitty, because, like... If you go onto any fucking platform, like, be it Reddit, even fucking Discord now, like, when you try to find a group for Asians, like, the first result is, like, oh, wanna meet some white men? <laughs> wanna fuck some white men? Wanna be an orifice for white men? And it's like, like oh, for fuck's no, sake, no. can I, can I not, can I, can this not be in my face? Like, that, that's, like, literally yeah. me when I'm on Facebook trying to find an Asian group. It's like, hey, by the way, you're a woman when I want to fuck a white man. Like, fuck me. What the hell? And, and then when you do find one, they're inclusive of white people. Yeah. And it's like, okay, if, if you want to play that game, sure. And then like the one place where it's like explicitly trying to facilitate, you know, um, relationships between Asian men, Asian women. Like, as, again, it's not being a forced... It's not a forced thing. People, if people want to be in that relationship, they're in that group for that reason. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, you can't do this. And I'm like, there's so many predatory groups that are, like, exploitative of Asian women, um, especially in... The, we're not allowed to have our safe space. Yeah. And, and these spaces exist. They proliferate like a fucking cockroach's nest. Like, they're fucking everywhere. And... <laughs> They're allowed to exist? Like, what the hell? This doesn't make sense to me at all. And, like, okay, if if that's your bar, then kick out the people who are being racist, but that doesn't even happen either because they don't understand what is and is not racist. Like, there will be white dudes who make racist Asian jokes, and then the mods are like, oh, that's not racist. Okay. Well, then what the fuck is the point? What are you doing? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I know. And it's, <sighs> again, it's so shitty because, like, a lot of these jokes are targeted at Asian women and our sexuality and all that. And we shouldn't have to fucking defend ourselves in a space created for us. It doesn't add up. I don't know why they allow for it to happen. Like, like fucking idiots. But... Mm. Uh, well, they don't think it's racist because they don't know what that means. But yeah, I've been reading a lot of like Asian American history as of late, and like it, it doesn't seem like times have changed because I've been reading stuff on like how Asian women came to America specifically, and they were only allowed to be here as long as their quote unquote sexual respectability was intact, which meant, um being married and even being married to an Asian man wasn't enough because we were assumed to be prostitutes. And again, the only, another mass arrival of Asian women was the War Brides Act, which again mm. reinforces this whole, you know, heteropatriarchy of like being an orifice for white men, essentially, and the white savior narrative, which a lot of men like to deploy white white men like to deploy on asian women because they're saving us from you know yes from evil foot binding which is a practice that ended in the early 1900s i think and it's in china not all of us are chinese fucking hell and 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 was like i think a matriarchal thing like the women were enforcing this uh, oh yeah norm. yeah it was started by a woman and i'm not saying that men didn't enforce it in some way but yeah the women it was definitely women forcing each other to do this yeah because the thing is like you need to they consented to it it wasn't like oh foot binding is a bad thing it was mothers forcing their children to do this mm -hmm. um so let's not pretend that women don't have agency because that's not feminist newsflash anyway <laughs> uh beyond that tangent and speaking of more white entitlement, uh, in a, on a more serious and violent note, there was the recent murder of a nail salon worker. Um, a white woman walked out refusing to pay after getting her nails done, and 
you know, the nail salon worker went after her to try to get her money as you do. Like this happens all the fucking time, unfortunately. And um, this time this lady backed over her with her car and left. So she, she murdered her basically. She's, she's dead. She's leaving behind a family. And uh, I don't know if I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on this. Apparently, she was in the um, nail salon, tried to pay with her credit card. Um, it got declined. So she was like, I'm just going to go into my car and get the money. And they obviously could smell bullshit. So they, you know, followed her. And then again, that happened. Um, yeah, she was rushed to hospital. I think her, her name was... Um, Annie New Wing. Mm. And yeah, her partner was there as well. And he was trying to like, you know, stop the collision from happening. But I think he was quoted saying he wasn't Superman. He couldn't hold the car while she was like, um, you know, yeah. driving over her. And it's, I don't know, it's just so fucked up to hear this news so early on in the year. And... I think uh, her name, the perpetrator's name, the alleged perpetrator was uh, Crystal Whipple, I believe. Hmm. I think she's cited to be in her early 20s, so younger than us, I think. Which is so fucking appalling to hear. Um, oh, did she has a, there was a GoFundMe started, that was good. Oh yeah, um, yeah, she has a GoFundMe, it was, the only... Um, requested for 10,000, but I think they've long passed that now. They're almost at 27K at uh, this point, mm-hmm. which is good to hear. Some like a lot of people don't stand behind her. I think also, yeah, the car was also a rental car. What the fuck? So it was very obvious from the beginning that she had no intention of paying at mm-hmm. all. Uh, they, they found the rental car like like a while later so she just, just like, abandoned, abandoned it and she's on the run now with no money because her bank card got yeah it was a stolen rental car that's why they can't find her oh right my now. god okay wow so she has a she criminal record worse. there's like a whole mugshot of her like being you know plastered online so people can find her and it's like oh she's one of these types trash basically. yeah yeah basically white trash oh god and i, I can't help but think that the reason that she was fine murdering an Asian person was because she doesn't see us as people. Yeah, like she mm. fucking, it's a hit and run. She doesn't care, mm. you know. She didn't care from the start. You fucking murder someone over $35. Like, you deserve to fucking die. Like, ugh. Hey, painful. <laughs> yeah, pain. I don't want to get into the whole, like, how she would die because I, I would actually, like, get into detail with that. Sorry. Just, you know, consequences for this injustice. I just hope they don't spin some fucking angle on how, oh, she's mentally ill, or like... She's a, she's an addict because she had a bad childhood, and that made her racist. Like, no. <laughs> Again, mentally ill people aren't racist. It's not a mental illness. Uh, yeah, sorry about the depressing news. But I think the last thing that we want to touch on before we go today is the latest rounds of deportation. Um, You definitely are on the pulse more than I am. Barely, but yeah, I guess. Uh, So I guess update on deportation. As we know, ICE is uh, targeting the Southeast Asian community, uh, specifically Cambodians because of... I don't know, because of the criminal histories of um, some members. But what they're doing now, um, I think a local judge from California ruled that there is to be a temporary restraining order against ICE uh, because they don't want them just like hauling people off in vans in the middle of the night. So I think the stipulations for this restraining order is that they are to give 14 days notice to people they intend to put in detention 
they also have to give it has to contain documents the charging documents in immigration court uh, two the removal order three the criminal conviction records upon which the removal order rests so they actually have to give proper paperwork and reasons before putting someone in detention and i think the notice will give the people time to you know fight back Mm -hmm. and prepare and you know whatever needs to be done like social media exposure whatever which you can find more information on uh, uh, searaids.org they have this they have the whole document so if you you know anybody that needs this like um you know have a look at it and see if it applies but yeah it's really i mean it's good that uh jay you said it was like a local government like that ruled this uh, yeah, I was saying that this is a good sign that at least the local government is in opposition to ICE. So it's not like, you know, they're making it easy and saying, hey, come come take these people. So there's definitely a disagreement about how this should be done. Um, obviously, if you follow us, you know our stance on this shit. Like, we're SEA, this is bullshit. The U.S. fucking caused the kind of problems in in asia that forced people to come here as refugees and now they're like fuck you go back so yeah it's it's wrong clearly and it should be considered an issue that all of us should be caring about oh yeah oh they have the goal to say that oh they're economic migrants i'm like yeah you fucked up people's economies that's what you fucking did Yes, with bombs. Bloody hell. And neoliberalism. Yes. And murder and rape and human trafficking. But hey, just just pin it on us. We can we can pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. Ah, oh, motherfuckers. <sighs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that was just a brief rundown. We don't mean for this shit to be depressing, but we hope that this inspires you to clap back when needed and to take action when you can whether that's like signing petitions attending protests or just simply like challenging people who are being racist in your everyday life these are small ways that you can fight back you know uh but if i had to give a really honest summary of everything that we just talked about Basically, entering 2019, racists feel entitled to spread racist lies about us. They feel entitled to police our culture. They feel entitled to our bodies, access to us. They feel entitled to murder us over a manicure. And when they're done with us, when we don't have any use to them anymore, they feel entitled to deport us back to the countries that they fucking destroyed, which made us come over here. So this is the state of Asian America today. These incidents highlight the severity of our current reality. And really, this can apply to diaspora in general because the West doesn't have much of a difference in the way that they treat Asian people. So please don't dismiss this kind of stuff. It's indicative of the bigger problems. And we hope that as you follow us and as as we get more political and more riled up about this kind of shit, that you can also understand the greater problems that they feed into. It isn't just a joke. So I guess that's what I have to say. Do you have anything else to add, Sen? Yeah, I know, like, all these serious topics are a bit of a downer. I know some people are like, oh, I don't want to hear this. But instead of being sad and living in some kind of delusion and thinking that watching movies with Asians in them is going to change shit, like, how about you get mad and channel that um, anger into productive Mm -hmm. means, you know? 
I'm not saying be angry and start lashing out at everybody and thinking that's good. Like, try and channel that, you know, anger into a, a passion for, you know, social justice and, and causes that are worthy of our time because we're trying to advance ourselves in this social space. And right now we're regressing. Um, our community is, you know, dwindling in terms of numbers, like they're trying to get rid of us right now. And again, I know this pod's been very American centric, but like the West, they're all in collaboration. There's, there's this thing called Five Eyes, if you mm-hmm. already haven't heard. So just know that, or like, don't think of this as just like an American problem because it's happening in small ways in other countries. Like, just take a gander at sort the sort of immigration policies being implemented and you you can probably tell how they feel about you uh well we hope that you enjoyed this pod like you that you felt more informed that you're willing to discuss this with your friends or family and uh stay angry productively angry And we hope to see you again this month. Uh, Thanks for listening. And welcome to 2019.